Now, today we are going to work on frustum volume. We have to make clear about, we have to be clear about few things that what is the frustum and what is the volume. I'll be using this presentation, it's very nice, it will be really helpful, it has some questions which will be helping you to review the topic. Now, look at the picture. Kulala is the largest pyramid in the world by volume. By volume means that it has the, la the biggest space, so the largest uh, availability of space where we can put any liquid or gas in it. Now, the lawyer is an art museum in Paris, part of which is in the shape of a pyramid. The pyramid is 20.8 meter high and has a square base of side 34 meter. Now, we have to find out what? We have to find out the volume of it. But for finding a volume, we have to be clear about few things. Number one, they have given us the height and they have given us the base, which is a square base of a side 34 meter. Now, they want us to calculate the amount of liters of the air pyramid would contain. The thing is that the formula that we can use here is 1 over 3. Volume is equals to 1 over 3 times base area times height. If I'll share that with you first, let me just discuss this point that 1 liter is equals to 1000 centimeter cube. Why we are discussing this here? Because they want us to tell the answer in liters. And for finding the answer in liters, we should know that 1 liter is equal to 1000 centimeter cube. For this one, if we will convert the units of 20.8 meter into 1000 centimeter cube, we know the formula 1 over 3 times base times height. 34 meter is equal to 3400 centimeter. They have given us the value of one side since it is a square, so we can multiply side to itself or we can take the square of the side to get the answer. So 34 times 34 will give me the number, but since they want us to give the answer in liters, we're converting it into centimeter first. After converting it into centimeter, I got 3400 centimeter and 2080 centimeter. So first thing what I did here, I changed meters to centimeters. At the end, when I will multiply, when I will solve this question, my answer will be in centimeter cube. And after knowing that my answer is one centimeter, one uh, is in uh, centimeter cubes, I can divide it with 1000 to get my answer in liters. How? Just take a look, you will get the correct picture. Now, 34 meters, which was this one here, is now converted into centimeter. 20.8 meter is 2080 centimeter. What I'm going to do here is, I know that the formula for volume is 1 over 3 times base area times height. Base area means 3400 times 34, because we know that 34 is the length of one side. So 34 times 34 makes what? Uh, volume is equals to 1 over 3 times 3400 times 3400 times 2080. 2080 is what? It's from here. Now, volume is equals to this. When you calculated this number, you got this big number. We know that centimeter cubes thing. Forget about this whole value. Just look at this centimeter cube. This centimeter cube and this centimeter cube here, they will show you the correct picture now because we know that 1000 centimeter cube 1000 centimeter cube is equal to what? 1000 centimeter cube is equal to 1 liter. So if I'll ch take this value and I will divide it with 1000, cent 1000, you will find the correct number. Like I'm dividing it with 1000, the answer will be 8014.9333.333. Whenever you are dividing any number with hundreds or thousands, just remember this tip here that if you have 2, 3, 6, 8, 4, 9, 7, 2, 8, and you are dividing it with 1000, remember that this number has a decimal at the end. So if you are dividing it with 1000, just take these three zeros and move the decimal to three places to the left side. 1, 2, 3. So your answer will be 2, 3, 6, 8, 4, 9, 2, 3, 6, 8, 4, 9, point seven two eight. So this means you just divided the number with 1000. This is a tip. If you have 100, you will move it to only two places. If you have 10, move it to only one place. Now, moving it further, this is what? This is the value in liters. Now we figure out the volume. We figure out the volume of this pyramid that this amount of gas can be used or liquid can be used in this pyramid. Let's have a look at another question. A frustum is, eff it is effectively a cone or a pyramid with a smaller pyramid or a cone cut off. Let's understand this with a picture that if this is one cone here and I'm cutting it into half from this point, you will get this circle here and this circle here and this portion here, this is called frustum. 
Finding the volume of a frustum will be a little tricky in this way. How? Just have a look. Um, sometimes we have circle at the base, sometimes we have square, sometimes we can have rectangle, we can have different shapes in the, n in the bottom. We have to find our base area since we know that 1 over 3 uh, 1 over 3 times base area times height is my answer, is my volume. So I should know that what is my base object. If it is a square, I will multiply the same thing to itself because square formula is length square. And if I'm talking about a rectangle, it will be length times width. If I'm talking about a circle, it will be pi r square. Whatever that thing that we have in our denominator in the basement of the object, we can times it with the height to find the answer. And then we'll find out the base area. In this part, let's say, uh, here we, we get the clear picture about the frustum that this the remaining part is a frustum. Here we have a question. It says, to calculate the volume of a frustum, you must consider the full cone as well as the smaller one which has been removed. Now, if I will extend this line from this point to up in the same di dimension, the same direction, and this will be up here, they are meeting at each other at this point. So this means my real cone was this big. My real cone was this big. How do you know about the real cone? When you extend the line by using the same length. So you know the real cone of now. Let's have a look in the presentation that how we have this cone. Uh, for finding the length, for finding the, the actual thing, because here we have this as 6 cm, this as 4 cm. The height is 5 cm right now. To find the volume, to find the proper volu volume of this thing, you should know the volume of the full cone first or the height of the full cone first. For that, what I'm going to do is, like I told you, you can extend the line. So let's have a look. When they extended the line, they said this is the point where the two things are meeting. Now, this is the missing length, but I ha don't have this length, do I? No, I don't have this length. So I'll put x here. When I put x here, this means the, the total cone is now what? Now, I have 5 plus x as the height of this cone, the bigger cone. If I not look at this part, I look at this whole bigger cone, then I have this plus this as the total height of the cone. Now, as per the rule, the ratio of the height to the base will be the same for both cones as they are similar. So height to the base. If height is bigger, base is bigger. Like if the height is big, base is big. If the height is small, base is small. They're direct proportion. So more the height will be, more the base will be. Now, small cone, height divided by base radius. Now what we are doing here is, we want to find out that how we will calculate the volume of it. And for that, we should know what is x here. To find the volume of x, because once we find the value of x, we will subtract, we will add these two values to make the height of the total cone. We will find the volume of the total cone and we will minus it from the volume of the smaller cone. So once we have the whole thing and we minus this much area, we will be left with frustum. Again, I am going slow for this time. For the whole cone, if you have the height and base, you can find the volume. Once you find the volume of the whole cone, you can find the volume of the smaller cone this much, because you, if you have the height, you can do height and base, like we know volume is equals to one over three, base area into height, and then you will minus the volume of the smaller cone from the bigger cone. So what you'll be left with with the smaller portion of frustum. Now, this we have four over Five. Uh, sorry, x, uh, x is our height, so height over volume. So x over 4 is my height divided by base radius. And this is big cone is what? Big cone is x plus 5 over 6. What we are doing here, small cone height divided by base radius, we want to find out the, the, the volume. We want to find out the length first to find out the volume, the height of this thing. So x over 4, I'm putting it here. And is equals to x plus 5 over 6. In this position, we know that this is not the same as this one. So we'll make the denominator same first. 4 times 6, x times 6. This whole times 4, this times 4. Multiply this whole fraction with the denominator of the opposite fraction. Multiply this whole fraction with the denominator of the opposite fraction. Now I have 6x over 24 and uh, 4x plus plus. Uh, 20 over 24. If you if you look at the presentation here, 
what I have here is just a second let me just change it to okay here now multiply both sides with this one with the 6 and other one with the 4 now we have 6x 6, 6 times x 6x 6, 6 times 4 24 and 4x plus 4 5 is a 20 over 24 now this is 24 this is 24 multiply both sides with 24 so we can get rid of this 24 now we have 6x plus 4x plus 20 just minus this now now divide both sides by 4 now you have 6x is equals to 4x plus 20 if you simplify this part if you bring this x now subtract 4x the thing is that you should have the same family members together this is x family this is x family so let's bring 4x to this side we get 6x minus 4x which is equals to 2x is equals to 20 leave this x here take this 2 to the other side as for the maths rule we know that 20 divided by 2 will give make it 10 so 10 is my x once I have the x now I can change this number to 10 centimeter my total height is 15 centimeter and base is 6 centimeter now remember the formula its volume is equals to 1 over 3 times base area times height so 1 over 3 times base area I'm working for the bigger cone so volume for the B1 so VB is equals to 1 over 3 times base area is what 6 square 1 over 3 times base area times height is what 15 now VB is equals to 1 over 3 times 36 times 15 if you simplify it 12 times 5 makes 60 so VB is equals to 60 now the 60 is what let's have a look what we have in the presentation now um, we know the formula we did the whole thing 1 over 3 into fixed square and VB is equals to 20 okay great now remember that when we are working like I told you in the beginning that we are working with the circle so pi r square is my formula so they did pi r square 6 times 6 36 times 15 and then divide by 3 by uh, multiplying with 3.14 1 times 180 is the pi they didn't solve the pi yet 180 pi is my answer for the bigger cone for the small cone the same formula and here when we do it this way we got the answer for this one which is smaller cone is 160 pi by 3 when you divided this number and you minus this answer from the bigger one like volume for the final cone is 180 pi minus 160 pi by 3 the answer is 397.94 centimeter cube this is the volume of the smaller cone and this is the volume of the bigger cone minus and with each other you will find the thing if you are still confused about this part let's take an example of this rectangle if I want to know the area of the non shaded portion what I will do I will find the volume of 8 times let's say I will find the area of this one and 3 times 2 I will find the area of this one and I will minus both areas so 8 times 972 is the area of the whole thing 3 times 2 is the area of the shaded part if I will minus it from here 66 will be my answer for <coughs> 72 minus 6 will be 60 6 yeah 66 will be my answer for the non shaded portion so the bigger one I minus the smaller one I left with the remaining part same thing we did here uh, you can see the another example here let me show the another question you can calculate it and uh, I'll give you some time for that now here is the here is the same thing same formula same methodologies I hope you will uh, understand this part because the same thing here and we are done with this part you can check that now to calculate the volume like we did the x part first remember that we figure out the x first the missing length missing height of the thing and then we solve it and then you find out the, uh, the answer this is the uh, picture and uh, it's better if you can try this this question this is this is your plenary if you will do it successfully this means you have understand the topic thank you very much for watching this video I am sure that you will be able to understand this part if there's any confusion you feel please let me know I'll be able to read your comments in the comments corner thank you very much have a nice day